So at the beginning of the year, things looked really bad for Democrats. It seemed as if November would be a bloodbath, but slowly and surely things are starting to change. At this moment, it doesn't look like they'll be able to recapture the House, but when it comes to the U.S. Senate, it's looking a lot better for them. And I think there's a number of factors for this. Certainly, their extremism when it comes to a number of issues, namely abortion, has hurt them. Also, their votes against marriage equality, against contraception as a right, against capping the cost of insulin. These are all things that the American people want that the GOP does not support. So their extremism is hurting them. But also another problem is just the candidates aren't very good. And we all see it, but you want to know who else sees it? Mitch McConnell, because he actually cares. If the Senate is not retaken by Republicans, he cannot be the majority leader again. And he doesn't want that to be the case. So he's talking about, you know, their prospects and he's saying, hmm, Maybe the quality of candidates, this is his words, are the reason why, you know, it's not looking that that good. Let's take a look at what he says here. This is from NBC News. Quote, I think there's probably a greater likelihood the House flips than the Senate. Senate races are just different. They're statewide. Candidate quality has a lot to do with the outcome, he said in Florence, Kentucky, at a Northern Kentucky Chamber of Commerce luncheon when asked about his projection for the 2022 election. Quote, right now we have a 50-50 Senate and a 50-50 country, but I think when all is said and done this fall, we're likely to have an extremely close Senate either our side up slightly or their side up slightly. So it's subtle, but he's saying there that candidate quality, it has a lot to do with the outcome, meaning the GOP base is not sending their best. And this is pretty obvious. I mean, when you look at individuals like Dr. Oz, Herschel Walker, They've been a disaster. I mean, let's talk about Dr. Oz first. On Thursday, Cook Political Report shifted the Pennsylvania Senate race from a toss-up to lean Democrat following a plethora of gaffes from Dr. Oz and just instances where he makes himself look stupid. And more importantly, after polling indicates that he's trailing his progressive opponent, John Fetterman, by an average of 8.7% points. So what was a possible win for the Republican Party is now leaning out of their favor. In Georgia, Herschel Walker trails his Democratic opponent Raphael Warnock by more than four points on average after Herschel Walker just continues to make a fool of himself with bizarre and incoherent statements. And there are also ads now detailing the violent abuse of his ex-wife, and that's gaining more traction. And that didn't really have an impact during the primary, but in a general election, Things like this are going to hurt you where you hear somebody's ex-wife talk about the things that he's saying, the threats that he made on her life. And even if that wasn't a factor, I mean, if you go to one of his events and you just listen to him, who can understand what this guy is saying? Like, I actually think he's not mentally fit to serve in the U.S. Senate. But, you know, GOP voters rolled the dice and they went with them. Now, they both were propped up by Donald Trump. Both received the endorsements of Donald Trump. Now, was that the best strategic choice for Donald Trump? I don't know, but Trump doesn't necessarily make endorsements based on who's more electorally viable or who has the better policy positions. Really, what he does is he bases this off of loyalty. So when it comes to Dr. Oz, I mean, Dr. Oz is also a TV star. Trump is a TV star. Maybe there's some, you know, friendship there. Herschel Walker is a longtime ally of Donald Trump. So that's what he did. He didn't really factor in the particular states and the needs of constituents and what they might want. He just said, well, I like this person. And just by doing that, you know, he propped up these candidates. Now, I'm not going to say that Trump made or break these races, but certainly that is a factor. And Mitch McConnell has got to be a little bit pissed off that Donald Trump may have sunk in these seats for them. Now, it's not just Dr. Oz and Herschel Walker who are doing poorly because Marco Rubio and Ron Johnson incumbents are also in danger. So keep that in mind. We're not just talking about new GOP primary winners. We're talking about incumbent Republicans. This is huge. So as Chris Walker of Truthout explains, fresh off his primary election victory in Wisconsin, Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes appears to be in a good position to oust incumbent Senator Ron Johnson. In a Marquette Law School poll published on Wednesday, 51% of voters said that they back Barnes or lean toward doing so, while only 44% of voters said the same for Johnson, who has been more 
marred by a number of controversies, including his involvement in the fake elector scheme being pushed by former President Donald Trump in January of 2021. Meanwhile, a University of North Florida poll shows Representative Val Dennings slightly ahead of incumbent Senator Marco Rubio. Demings has 48% support among voters in her state, while Rubio has 44% support according to the poll. Now, when it comes to Val Dennings, I'm not necessarily super enthusiastic about her because she's just a pretty standard corporate Democrat, but for her to come that close in this race. So this isn't even, you know, within the margin of error. She's leading Marco Rubio, at least according to this poll. We have to see others, so this could be an outlier. But nevertheless, she's she's leading Marco Rubio. That is huge because Florida has effectively become a red state. So I didn't even think that it was possible for her to defeat Marco Rubio. And the fact that she's now leading him, at least according to one poll, that is no small thing. And again, I'm not enthusiastic about her, but she'd be a giant trade-up compared to Marco Rubio. So that, in and of itself, should be sending the GOP completely, you know, uh, terrified. But at the same time, I'm not going to be convinced about this particular race and s until we see more polling, but still really good indication when it comes to Mandela Barnes. Now that's someone who is an incredible candidate. He's not just pro worker, pro union. He's pro Medicare for all. And Ron Johnson, you know, he's hurting himself again. He's now implicated in the fake elector scheme as the article pointed out. But when it comes to certain issues like marriage equality, He's not taking a firm stance. So the National Organization for Marriage, which is an anti-gay, bigoted organization that's against marriage, they released an ad essentially attacking Ron Johnson because he won't take a stand. He said, oh, well, there's no reason to be against it, but yet he won't firmly commit to it. So the people who want marriage equality, which is now most Americans, they're not satisfied. And the people who don't want marriage equality also aren't satisfied. So when you ride the fence, sometimes you end up hurting yourself in an effort to please both sides. So... You know, Mandela Barnes, if he were able to defeat Ron Johnson, that would be giant. That would be huge. Now, I don't want to, like, paint this overly rosy picture because it's not like progressives are going to sweep. Certainly, we have John Fetterman, Mandela Barnes, really exciting uh, candidates, I think. But then we also have Charles Booker. Now, based on at least one poll by Mason Dixon, he is trailing Rand Paul by 16 points. And that's really unfortunate because I believe in Charles Booker and I'm not going to discount him yet. But again, this is a this is going to be an uphill battle because he's in the state of Kentucky. So very difficult to pull out a win in a deep red state like that. But perhaps, you know, things will change. He has a really huge grassroots organization behind him in this state. And, you know, I'm not going to count him out yet, but again, it's going to be a minor miracle for him to actually defeat Rand Paul. So that's one race where, you know, it's not all cookies and rainbows, unfortunately. But the reason why, you know, Mitch McConnell is seemingly worried about this is because in the event he's not the majority leader, if Republicans don't take back the Senate, then he loses control over judicial nominees. And we all know that Mitch McConnell likes to stack the courts. He helped Donald Trump stack huge numbers of far-right conservatives. He helped Republicans take back the Supreme Court. So if it is the case that he's not the majority leader in the next couple of years and there's a Supreme Court vacancy, Biden gets to make that appointment. You know, Mitch McConnell can't do much to block it. So overall, I am crossing my fingers. I I'm really crossing my fingers. I don't have much hope for the House, but when it comes to the Senate... Things are looking good, but I'm remaining cautiously optimistic because we just don't know. So many things can change between now and November, so I don't want you to get your hope up. If you're in one of these states, then certainly you should do your part to help these candidates defeat these Republicans who are ghouls. And um, yeah, we'll leave that there. I love that Mitch McConnell is essentially trashing these uh, these Republicans. And he's right. I don't think that any Republican is appealing at all. But when you have people like Dr. Oz, the GOP equivalent of Hillary Clinton, when you have Herschel Walker, who doesn't even know where he is. I mean, Republicans have been knocking Joe Biden for a couple of years, claiming that he, you know, is out of his mind. And I think that that's true to a certain extent. But when you have a candidate like Herschel Walker, I mean... I don't even know who this appeals to. Like he says right wing talking points sometimes, but he's very clearly incapable of serving because he he has issues that need to be addressed. Not like don't give him power, like give him help. His family needs to step in and intervene and get him the help that he needs because very clearly something is off there. So, yeah, there you have it. Even Mitch McConnell thinks that the GOP Senate candidates are dog shit. You love to see it. 
I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I built a successful chicken business. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I built a successful chicken business. I don't talk like a politician.